Welcome to AppTerabytes. Today I'd like to look into the different use scenarios that people will have to look at how much battery life they can expect to get just out of solar charging and how much battery life they can expect to get out of solar charging and just using a usual 110 volt United States outlet. So this is from the Aptera website from the Frequently Asked Questions section. They say that from a 110 volt cord, you can get about 13 miles per hour through charging. So this is the map from the Aptera website that helps you look at your specific location to see how many miles of charging you can expect to see from just solar charging alone and how often you will need to charge. More specifically, they tell you how many times a year you might expect to have to charge based on average driving conditions. So zooming into a few of the different zones, you can see that this is part of Chile here, which is likely zone 12, at least in the mountain here. You've got some zone 10 here in the western part of South Africa, some zone 8 here in Southern California, and then most of the eastern United States will be zones 6, 4, and 2. And then you can see here in Ireland and parts of the United Kingdom you have some zone 0 as well as parts of China here. So I took most of those locations and looked at the number of hours of sunlight to expect during the peak of summer and then during the valleys of winter. I thought it was very interesting that one of the Zone Zero locations actually has the longest day at the peak of summer and you can actually see that that is a trend going from zone 12 to zone 0 the days actually get longer in the peak of summer but the main difference is that the days are much shorter as you go from the higher zones to the lower zones in the winter or at least when they have their shortest days I then took those numbers and tried to make a ratio to try to get an understanding of how much range loss you can expect to get per day during the winter and then I turned that into the closest model that I could come up with at least for most of the United States locations you can see that the numbers are very close in terms of the percentage difference between the peak of summer and the depth of winter It does make you wonder whether the map that they show us on the Aptera website actually uses winter data or data from the shortest days. As you can see that that is how the zones are broken up from this table at least. So then looking at the most recent data on how much people are driving to and from work on a daily basis. This website here was able to determine that people were driving about 41 miles per day just for work alone. And so that is the number that we will sort of focus on. And then this is from WCNC.com. You can see that in 2019 there was a series of tests conducted by AAA which showed that in 20 degree Fahrenheit temperatures electric vehicles were only averaging about 59 percent of their official driving range. And then more recent reports from Consumer Reports shows that this can actually be a little bit better with you getting about 75 percent of your expected driving range in colder temperatures. So then I took all of that data and turned it into this calculator for you all. And this is found in the same Google Sheet that the calculator trying to determine when you might expect to receive your 
order can be found in. And so basically for this calculator, you enter your expected number of daily miles. And so you can basically keep track of your number of miles over the course of a period of time and then divide that by the number of days. I did that for a two month span to get my number. You can also look between two oil changes and look at what your odometer read between the two and look at the number of days between the two and do it that way. To get a much larger sample size, you can enter the zone on the map. So highlight this link here. It'll take you to the map on the Aptera website. Find which zone you are and enter that in. And then put in your range model that you are expecting to reserve or purchase. And then the last thing you'll want to enter is the number of hours that you might expect to plug it in per night. So then this will spit out all of these blue values for you. So basically if you are almost at empty, so if you go on a long trip and come back and you're almost to empty, how many days until you get back to your full battery range? Remember that usually you'll only want to charge to about 90% or something less than your full battery range and that helps preserve your battery life. And so these two numbers are the number of days that you would expect it to get to that full battery range with solar charging and plug-in charging and then for solar charging only and then the same data for winter months and on the flip side this helps you look at how many miles you can expect to gain including your use case scenario after one week and this is the same data for the winter time Here you can see some of the assumptions. So basically, I took the zones on the map and used a formula or model to try to come up with the total number of miles that you can expect to get since that's not fully shown on the Aptera website. And so zone 12 was right around 44 miles and two of the zones for the most of the United States. Zone 8 was about 36 miles and zone 4 was about 28 miles of solar charging per day. So those numbers end up showing up here when you enter your zone. You'll see sort of the amount of solar charging that you can expect to get per day in the depths of winter on the coldest days and on the shortest days. And then the battery range loss that you can expect to get based on what zone you're living in because that will determine how cold it is where you live more than likely. The last calculator that you can find within the same Google Sheet is a calculator to help you determine how much cargo you can carry. So you basically enter the weight of the driver and the passenger that you generally expect to be driving in the vehicle that you generally expect to be riding in the vehicle and you're able to get the number of pounds that remains. Aptera has said that the total maximum cargo of the vehicle should be around 500 pounds though they are trying to get this to be a higher number as they work on it. And then you can see that you'll also get the number of suitcases if you're going on an international flight number of suitcases that you can take and so in this case it would be about two suitcases per person I did want to take a minute to say that I really appreciate all of the subscribers to this channel and all of the comments all of the positive comments all of the constructive comments and I hope you're getting something out of this and please comment below if you have any suggestions or anything that you would like to see me try to figure out or take a deep dive on. I'm also going to link the survey that was linked in the previous video so that we can get as many people as possible to fill out the survey showing which battery size they are ordering. I did make it so you can only enter one response in that survey so some of you who are ordering more than one vehicle 
you'll just have to pick one of them and enter it into the data set. And then remember for the Google Sheets, you can click on File and then click on Make a Copy and save it to your own Google Drive, and that allows you to edit the numbers yourself. Thank you for watching.